Since you've already completed the tutorial on how to add stairs, this tutorial is going to show you how to create shafts for stairs and elevators, and we're going to add an elevator library part as well. So first I'm going to go ahead and add my stair, since you guys have already added your stairs or have learned how to add stairs. My preference is to use the run option as opposed to the landing and support option, so I'm going to make a really quick stair. and then I'm going to move it into the space where I know the stair is in my project. Ideally we want to get a little more precise than this, but since we're focusing on shafts, we're not going to worry about that in this particular instance. I've completed my stair and I can look at it in section as well. So what I want to do is I want to go to view, tile views, and see the impact in both section and in plan when I add my shaft for my stair. So I'm going to stay on the architecture tab and farther over to the right we have these different options for putting openings in our walls and in our roofs. So we can have an opening by face which we can use for roofs. We have a shaft which is what we're going to use today. A wall opening which is when we have a cased opening which would be maybe um, an opening higher up in a wall, kind of like an interior window between maybe a kitchen and a dining room. We can also use this for a cased opening, which is going to be an opening between two rooms that doesn't have a door in it. Vertical openings and then dormer openings. But again, today we're going to work on shaft. So we click on shaft and it uses the sketch tool as we've seen before in order to create the opening. Since I have a pretty simple stair, I'm just going to use the rectangular tool in order to create my shaft and then I'm going to finish my sketch and you can see that the shaft is actually a three-dimensional void object and it has properties just like we see with other things like walls and doors and roofs and floors. So it has a base level that it's associated with. In this instance the default is to have it go one foot below the level that it's associated with. That works really well for elevators because elevators obviously have to align the floor with the level, but they have equipment that is below that level that's part of the elevator construction. But in this instance, since we are having a stair that just goes down to our first floor, we don't need that base constraint and we will change that to zero. You also notice that it has an unconnected height of 20 feet, so when I got rid of that base constraint, it moved it up another foot so that the overall shaft was 20 feet. So I can either change it to associate to a level, or I can change the height. Now if we change it to associate with the level, that means that if the level moves, then the shaft height is going to change as well along with that or I can keep it unconnected and I can just change the height to whatever height I feel is appropriate. So we can also look at this in three dimensions and we can zoom in and hide the wall. We can also click on it and see it, but if we hide in view and we just select element as opposed to category, which would be hiding all walls, we can then see where that shaft is and that it is a three dimensional element. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that wall back on so that I don't forget later. And I was in the wrong view when I did that, so I need to make sure I'm in the right view before I hit Reveal Hidden Elements. And for some reason it's not letting me get back into that view and Reveal Hidden Elements. Okay, well never mind, I will not do that right now. So another thing we want to do is add an elevator. An elevator is a library part that typically does not come in the library that loads in with Revit, so we want to go online and get a library part that we're going to download and then open in Revit. So we go to the internet and we can either go to BIM Object, which is Autodesk's library part website, and it is sometimes a bit overwhelming because when you type in the word elevator, lots of different things come up and not all of them are elevators specifically but they might relate to elevators elevator guards you see here sometimes they relate in no way because this is a soap dispenser so my preference is to go to Revit City which is not at all associated with Autodesk it is actually a website for people who use Revit and they build their own Revit families and components 
and you can search the word elevator and see what they have. One thing with both BIM Object and with Revit City is that you have to have an account. They are both free, but you have to make an account before you can download anything. You can search, but you can't download any library parts. So since I was having problems with my internet earlier, I actually downloaded the elevator earlier. Here you can see some similar options. I actually downloaded the electric elevator, which ideally you want to be able to click on the page and look at it first and make sure it looks like what you're looking for. But again, since my internet was causing me problems, I went ahead and downloaded it and you can see it saved it for me and I can click on it and it automatically asks me if I want to open it and because it was created in Revit 2009 I have to upgrade it to Revit 2020 which is the version of Revit that I'm using. So yes I do want to upgrade the model and once it opens I can look at it and decide if I want to load it into my project. So hopefully it's a three-dimensional one but it doesn't look like it. It looks like it's just a plan which is not what I need. I actually need a three-dimensional model so I'm just gonna close this well, there's a front. Let's see what the views are. Ah, there are 3D views. So I want to look at that 3D view and this is what it would look like when I bring it in. And you can see the structural support. You can see the elevator. It's super basic. So I'm actually going to load it into project and close because I don't need it open anymore. And now it's asking me where to put it. And so I can hit the space bar to rotate it around based on where I might put it. So I can put it here next to my stair. One thing is that I haven't put any walls around it, which I need by based on code, but you see that it has these lines on it on the outside. That is the area that it needs in order to work. And then if we go back to our 3D view, I can see it and you see that it's a little tall for my project, but it is three-dimensionally in the project. So if it's something that bothers us, we can hide it in view to hide some of these things that are sticking out and just stick with our first floor plan where we have that. So another thing we want to do is we need to make a shaft. So I can go back to my section and I'm just going to move it over. So I can see where my elevator is now in section, so I need to add a shaft there as well. It's going to be the exact same shaft. It's another sketch line. And because there are these boundaries around it, I want to try to use those boundaries to make sure there's enough room based on the elevator requirements. And now I have a shaft for my elevator. Now we might need to make it a little bit lower because of the equipment, so we can Oops, I deselected it. So if I accidentally unselect it, I can also remember use my grips. And if I go from left to right, everything that I just encompass gets selected. And I can go up to the filter tool here and I can uncheck everything. And I can specifically check spe special equipment, which is that elevator. Or I can specifically check shaft openings. And then I can edit that shaft opening. I can have it connected up to top of roof. And I can make that base offset negative three feet so that it goes down even further. And then again, if I look in my 3D view, I can see the shaft for that as well. So there are two shafts, one for the stair and one for the elevator. So play with elevators and with shafts. And you can play with some of the other openings as well and see how they can help you realize your project ideas in Revit.